We all know that when there's a problem with something, whether it's a relationship problem or a health problem, most problems, if you don't deal with the exact cause or what's, what's the initiating factor in causing the problem, the problem just gets worse. Like what starts out with just a little bit of earfulness can progress to where you actually get hearing loss. Do you realize one in five kids now, you know, like in say from the age of six to 18, one in five has hearing impairment that's pretty much significant. And this is like doubled, at least doubled since like the 1980s. Now, if you go on Google, they'll say, oh, it's loud music, it's loud music, it's loud music. I'm not saying that is not listening to loud music, but I'm just saying there's another thing that's going on, which is kids nowadays have a reversal of their neck curve. And this reversal of the neck curve, which we'll see, it blocks the jugular veins. And when you block the jugular veins, you can get injury to the auditory nerve and if that keeps if the if if the pressure on the auditory nerve or the vestibulocochlear nerve continues you're going to end up with nerve damage and once a nerve's damaged it's not so easy to regenerate the nerve so we're going to talk about ear symptoms primarily about hearing loss about how it's progressive Look at all the medications this 17-year-old has tried. See how the 17-year-old's already having hearing loss is one of their symptoms. Plus they have all these other symptoms. So very rarely will somebody just say, I feel completely fine, but i am got earfulness or I'm losing my hearing. So if you're somebody or you have a child and they're starting to have difficulty hearing I, and they have a myriad of symptoms, I'm just telling you it's likely going to be from their neck. It probably is a structural thing. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't <laughs> not listen to loud music, like take a chill pill, you know, like, because you can't just listen to horribly loud things and think like the nerve's going to be fine. So look at all the things that person had. So this person, when we tested them, they had all kinds of jugular vein compression and they're on their way to getting better by doing cervical curve correction and they're getting prolotherapy for their ligamentous problems. Now, often people, when they come here and they have ear fullness, they have a little bit of dizziness, they're diagnosed with Meniere's disease. And this is just a Venn diagram that shows that both Meniere's disease and ligamentous cervical instability to structure have common symptoms of ear fullness, some hearing problems, hearing impairment, imbalance, nausea, ringing in the ears, vertigo, dizziness, body spinning, blurry vision. You might say, well, how would I know that they might have a problem in the neck? Well, if your child or you or somebody you know, they constantly are clicking their neck and they have clicking, popping, grinding in the neck or the head feels too heavy for the neck, these are all signs that, they, that the person has ligamentous cervical instability. Like when you move your neck, you're not supposed to hear clicking, grinding, crunching sounds in your neck. If you do, it means that the bones are moving too much and that condition is called ligamentous cervical instability. The ligaments hold the vertebrae together. Extended looking down at cell phones, that's where I think the real problem is. The ligament support in the back of the neck, it gets stretched out. And like a rubber band, if you stretch it out too many times, you're gonna end up where the ligament is now elongated. So the way you tighten it is a treatment known as prolotherapy. Prolotherapy involves injections into the ligaments to thicken and tighten them. And then this is a little bit complicated, but you see right here where the person, instead of having a cervical curve that goes this way, this, the atlas is going forward because of the ligament damage back here, and it's hitting the jugular vein and the vagus nerve before they go into the brain. Well, basically what happens is now you have a fluid flow obstruction out of the brain. Well, you gotta realize the hearing nerves and the other cranial nerves, they're inside the brain. Your eye's inside the brain, right? You, if you have some blurry vision, 
you know, you think it's, oh, I'm looking at the computer too much or this or that. You probably are, but it's actually causing structural problems in your neck. And now there's a fluid flow obstruction. So basically, cerebral spinal fluid accumulates around the auditory nerve or the hearing nerve and then that auditory nerve can get injured. Now other things that can happen is you could get vagus nerve compression here in the vagus nerve when we measure them. They're very, very small in most of the people that come here. That along with other cranial nerve problems can cause what's known as eustachian tube dysfunction. So eustachian tube dysfunction means that the connection between your ear and your throat the eustachian tube isn't opening and closing normally. Well, that's what helps regulate the pressure inside your ear. So imagine if the pressure inside the ear is too much, that can also cause hearing problems. It can cause damage to the structures, not only in the middle ear, but in the inner ear. And then because the auditory nerve is connected to the balance nerve, that's why it's called the cochlear vestibular nerve. The cochlea is the auditory nerve and the vestibular nerve is uh, basically the balance nerve. The, so if you've been diagnosed with Meniere's disease or vestibulopathy or vestibular neuritis, anything with vestibular, the same process could be causing your vestibular problems. And that's why ear fullness or hearing loss is almost always tied with some kind of a balance problem because the hearing nerve and the hearing nerve and then the balance organ here, the, the vestibular nerve, they're connected. So that's why hearing and ear fullness often goes with balance. Now basically sound comes in here, vibrates the tympanic membrane, that causes a vibration of the malleus inca stapes bones, then the vibration there is then transmitted electrically to the auditory nerve or the cochlear nerve of corti organ. And then eventually that is taken to the auditory cortex, which is in the temporal lobe of the brain. And that's when you actually hear. Almost all the people that I see or we see here at the Hauser Neck Center or Caring Medical Florida is they have brain fog with these various symptoms. Like they'll say, yeah, I have ear fullness. I might even have ear pain. I might feel like I'm losing some of my hearing. Like it's harder and harder for me to hear. But they're almost every single patient will say, I also have brain fog. I put this up here to show you that the work the brain does, the work the brain does is primarily from what you see. 8% of the sensory input to the brain is through hearing, but 80% is through visual. So even if you have hearing issues or ear issues or balance issues, what you should do is realize it's, li it's likely you have to decrease the amount of visual stimulus you have. Like, like if somebody's brain is sick, the brain needs rest. So the way the, you rest the brain is primarily by decreasing the amount of visual stimulus you have. Most of the visual stimulus that people have that's excessive is from the internet, is from social media, is from computers. I love, love this figure because if you look at it, this is the mandible, so it's right here. So the temporomandibular joint is right here. The cochlea, which is the hearing, nerve, the auditory nerve is right there. The semicircular canals, that's what does balance. It's right here. And look at this man, jugular veins right there, jugular veins right there. So when this thing, when the jugular vein gets blocked by TMJ problems or ligamentous cervical problems, all of a sudden then this is like a rip current. So imagine this is compressed here. It's right by the vestibulocochlear nerve. So when that thing gets compressed, it, all of a sudden now you hear the venous flow and that's called tinnitus. So most of the tinnitus or ringing in the ears that we see here is from block jugular vein because of a forward atlas, because of ligament injury in the neck. 
These are just stills from an upright cone beam CT scan, which is one of the analyses we do. But you could see where here's the TMJ, there's the semicircular canals, and you could just see with the measurements, they're all very, very close to each other. So in other words, you have hearing distortions or your hearing isn't quite right, or you have ringing in the ears, what you might want to do is just for fun, you put your neck in certain positions. Like usually in our patient population, when you lay down and you look up, so you lay down and you look up, normally the tinnitus or the hearing distortions improve. The other thing a person can do is change the position of their jaw. Like they could you know, move their jaw in a certain way and just see, does the pitch of that tinnitus change? Because that gives you some indication, is it a jaw problem or is it a neck problem? Like if somebody uh, has the jugular vein is compressed on the right here and they turn their head like left and up, then sometimes the jugular vein compression will decrease, you know, depending on the anatomy. So that's just something that you could do just to see is it a neck problem or a TMJ problem. This just kind of shows that the cerebral spinal fluid is what surrounds the auditory nerve and the vestibular nerve and that if the pressure gets too much because of jugular vein blockage it can cause vestibulopathy or auditory nerve problems which again can cause all kinds of hearing problems. Here's the many potential ear and hearing disorders caused by ligamentous cervical instability to structure. You can get auditory hallucinations, muffled hearing, ear fullness, tinnitus, improper sound understanding, that's called auditory processing disorder, altered sound perception, disacusis, clicking sounds, myoclonus, right? Click, 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 click dizziness, balance issues. If you make way too much earwax, cerumen, that can be from the eustachian tomb it is an opening, so the fluid isn't getting released from your ear into your throat. The extra fluid leaks through the tympanic membrane and then it solidifies and that's what one of the causes of excessive cerumen production. Of course, hyperacusis or sound sensitivity. So if you are somebody who's like, the sounds are too loud or even the sound of your own voice. Or you have echolalia. I've had that occasionally where you talk and it's like an echoing sound inside your head. That can be from ligamentous cervical instability. So somebody looks at a cell phone too much, eventually the cervical curve breaks down. It can affect the vagus nerve and it can affect the jugular vein and ultimately you can get all kinds of conditions. Eustachian tube dysfunction, conduction hearing loss, tensor tympani myoclonus. On MRI or CT scan you can have a high riding jugular bulb which is where the brain veins drain inside the skull before it becomes the internal jugular vein. You can get semicircular canal dehiscence, just meaning that the pressure is so high in the auditory vestibular nerve that the fluid causes some of the bone in the temporal bone to dehiss or basically dissolve, if you will. And that can cause all kinds of symptoms. And then you can ultimately get sensory neural hearing loss, meaning that the auditory nerve isn't working so good anymore or else it's, or it's permanently not, not working. And then eustachian tube dysfunction can cause vertigo, tinnitus, dizziness, ear pain, decreased hearing, ear fullness. Tinnitus is, there's not sounds, like somebody's not talking to you, but you're hearing something. And it's just called ringing in the ears. But I'm not even sure ringing in the ears is the right term. You know, like if you're <laughs> just in your bed or you're at home and there's not any noise, you're not supposed to hear anything. So 
tinnitus is a common thing that we see at the center here and this kind of explains it too. You have ligamentous cervical instability, you get increased fluid pressure on the auditory nerve, you station tube dysfunction, you get ear fullness. So again, this is a progressive disorder. So it may seem like whoop de doo I got a little bit of ear fullness, but again, it's a progressive disorder. You really do have to do something about it because then you get muffled sounds, eventually you get partial and temporary hearing loss, then you get greater hearing loss basically more of the time than you get partial permanent hearing loss than you get eventually total hearing loss. And this is that figure again. It's caused by jugular vein compression and vagus nerve dysfunction, which lead to the eustachian tube not opening and closing normally. The auditory vestibular nerves, because of the extra fluid and pressure, can eventually get nerve damage. I just want to do a little bit on the TMJ because the TMJ is really close by, right? It's within a centimeter of the auditory and the hearing nerve. And you could see that the temp this is the mandibular condyle, the temporal bone, so it's called temp tempomandibular joint. And you could see where there's all these ligaments. So when these ligaments get stretched out, that's when the disc, that's when the disc right here it subluxes anterior. When it subluxes anterior, that gives the clicking sound. So if you have clicking in your jaw, you have ligamentous temporomandibular joint instability. So you basically have instability of your jaw joint. And then ligamentous TMJ instability can cause a lot of different problems. Jaw stiffness, facial pain, eventually because of uh, of the TMJ, it puts additional strain on other ligaments, which can lead to an elongated styloid. You, it, can, it can decrease the space here, and then you can get internal jugular vein compression. Some people will use mouth guards, they'll use oral appliances, and sometimes those are effective. But if you have a lot of TMJ symptoms and you're having you know, you're going to go through a complicated uh, dental procedure to try to help. I would really, really encourage you. It's much, much simpler just to get some T TMJ prolotherapy and see if the symptoms go away. Because you'd hate to go through all that if it's actually a neck problem or a simple joint problem. Because you think about if, the, if this joint's loose, your teeth probably aren't going to align very well. You know, I mean, you're always going to feel like a tension in your face. And then obviously it can cause sleeping disorder because again, we said if this space gets narrowed by cervical problems or TMJ problems, then the airway gets blocked. And this again just shows how TMJ dysfunction can lead to a myriad of symptoms. The, the most common cause of these symptoms, in my opinion, is more related to the neck and the TMJ. I think usually the TMJ problem is secondary, not primary. But on rare occasions, we'll have it be the primary problem, but most of these things is due to the cervical problem causing the TMJ problem. And then TMJ dysfunction, because you get stretching of basically the ligament here, it puts increased force on the, on the bone in the inner ear that can give hearing distortions. You decrease the mandibular atlas space that can block the jugular veins or cause vagus nerve dysfunction. We talked about where a ligament can get calcified and that can lead to uh, same sort of thing and you get a myriad of body and brain symptoms. And these are some studies I'd really encourage anybody who wants to dive deep in this. We, from our charity clinic, we basically asked 702 patients that were treated at the charity clinic just with dextrose prolotherapy. How well did they do with three to five prolotherapy visits on average? And you can see that most people had a vast improvement in their pain. So if you have any sort of hearing symptom, I'd encourage you, if you can't figure it out what's causing the problem, consider that it may be related to your neck or your temporomandibular joint.